Hi, this is Tweek. Today we're going to continue with our Endangered Species Project and feature one of my favorites, the monarch butterfly. Join us. Supplies you'll need for this project are cardboard, some hot glue, a cake board, some decoupage or gloss, some paint, paintbrushes, pencils, a pair of scissors, and some beaded chain to hang your project. Also, some pipe cleaners. So let's get started. Today's project features the monarch butterfly. Yes, unfortunately, it is on the threatened endangered list. So we want to feature that by starting with finding an image of one, which I found on the internet. And I found that image, printed it out, and I folded it in half. Because to make the monarch or any butterfly, usually only have to do half of it and then repeat to the other side. So that's what I did. I looked at that and I drew out a picture. And here was my picture. Using this, I cut it out and placed it on some cardboard and then cut out that image so you can see here. Here's my wing. So I cut that out of cardboard. Now I need four of these, two for the front, two for the back. And like I said, you can just flip the image over and you have your butterfly ready to go. So let's get started on the painting. The main colors are orange and black for a monarch. And I'm gonna put down some cardboard to, to protect the table. And I've got my wing here. I don't want to waste more paint than I have. I don't have much left, but I do wanna take my pattern that I made and I cut it into like puzzle pieces so that I can tell where I need to put my black paint, where I need to put my orange paint. So I'm going to take my pattern and it comes about like this on my butterfly. And I'm going to trace that out. And that's just to give me a guide. What's really lovely about butterflies is you really can't go wrong in how you decorate them because they come in so many different varieties. Even the orange I'm using today, monarchs come in all variations of orange, the deep and the light, almost to an orangey yellow. They're just beautiful. So I'm going to take these pieces I cut out and I'm just going to line them up on my wing and go around so that I can see where it is. Let's see, I'm not doing this real carefully. I'm just giving myself a guide. I'm doing the right side of the wing right now, but you would repeat this process on the left so that you have a complete butterfly. You just mimic one side to the other. So here we go, now I've got my lines roughly drawn in. And you can see that here. So I'm gonna put black in here, orange here. That's pretty basic there, and we'll get going on that right now. Okay, I'm gonna start with the orange. Where's my little plate here? Put out a goodly amount, and I can get a little more. I just don't wanna waste paint, so orange it is. Here we go. Get a little bit of water. You can really choose your oranges. I chose this. It's uh, called Cadmium Red Light Hue. So they say this is a red. Looks kind of orange to me. <laughs> and as you paint the cardboard, I kind of like the variation of the paint. See how it gets thinner? It reminded me a little bit of the way a butterfly's wings are a little bit transparent when the sun hits them. And then you can add more paint in to give it better coverage. If you go a little over the lines, no big deal. That's why I'm doing the black next, because we can straighten those up as you not only have fun creating this image, but it will be unique, just like every butterfly is unique. Okay, let's switch over to black. So you're gonna complete this on both sides. I would simply take my pattern and flip it over. But right now, let's finish here, we're gonna do black. All right, here we go. Just gently, I'm gonna be a little more careful now around the lines, I want to be a little more crisp. Um, let's start over here. Get out of the way, you guys. Okay, here we go. Black. So I'm just gonna come down and just follow the lines. 
Continue around. Just brilliant with nothing else added to it already. It's just brilliant in color. Let me add just a little bit more orange. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the brush. I catch these little areas where I see. I didn't want the black to take away too much of the orange. Okay, that's good. I think we'll let that dry. We'll go on to the next step. Our wing is dry. And what you do is you do the same thing by flipping over the piece of cardboard for the other side of the butterfly and complete the same process. Use your little pieces that you cut out from your wing. Only this time you're flipping the image over and you do that with your wing as well. Very, very simple, and just repeat that process. You'd end up with your wing, it's painted and ready to go, and I've got these two little puzzle pieces. What I'm gonna do is lay it down over the paint, painted area, nice and dry now, and I'm gonna etch where these lines are. And I'm etch with a hard pencil. I can even pull down some of the lead a little bit. And I want to just make the lines, etch them into the paint just lightly and let me show you if you can see you pulled up the paper see there's the line and so what i'm just doing is copying my own design here onto the cardboard and that shows me where to add the veins in the wing so i sometimes have to scrub a little bit as i go but i want that etching there and there you can see just see and if you want to you could get your pencil and just etch it in it's going to add actually a little more definition to the vein when we add paint over it so that's where we're going to add in veins and then do the same with the bottom piece line it up okay and now i'm going to pull back the lead so i want that hard tip to make the etch So now, if you wanted to do the other side, you'd simply flip over your piece, flip over this piece, see, you can use it as a guide, again, to etch in the lines. Very simple. So we're done with you little puzzle pieces for a moment. We're gonna do the veins, and to do this, I just, if you look very carefully at a butterfly wing, the butterfly I looked at had like a purpley color in their veins. So I'm gonna use some of the orange, and I'm gonna mix in I tried reds, but I ended up going with this, like a, it's called a zillion crimson. It looks more like a purple to me, as you can see there. And between the two of them, I get a thin brush. Okay, and I'm going to mix up the color. And you end up with this purple yellow, which is perfect for the veins. See? And then I'm just going to come through, and you don't have to be... Oh, I forgot that last line, didn't I? Let me look at my... That's okay. All right, so we're going to go like this. We're going to just come in here and follow those lines. I'm not even being real careful. I'm just going to add them in. Follow the lines and continue along your wing. If you end up making a mistake, it's not a mistake. And even if you think it's a bad mistake, it might be one of those butterflies that got nabbed by a bird or something. You know, I see butterflies that have part of a wing that's missing or a little divot in the wing. So this project really lends itself to you being creative and just letting the piece come alive in whatever fashion you see fit there.
All right, so we've got our wing. And I'm going to decorate the outside. This is where the real pretty part comes in with the, with the monarch. And what I did was when I, when I cut up the puzzle, the little wing, I ended up with this outer side. See that? This is that drawing that I made. And right now I'm just going to use it as a bit of a guide to put my spots on. I'm not going to tape it down or anything. I'm just going to definitely just use it as a guide so I know where I want to put my dots. I'm going to get my little stubbier brush. Here again, this is, I'm just going to blob it on. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. I'm just going to take the paint and blob it. As you can see, it's real regular in my drawing. I just want to give it somewhat a similarity on each wing, even though the dots really could be anywhere. So take some white paint. I'm just going to kind of blob it. And I see that I've got, there's a blob here. See, just blob it on. Okay, look at how that's changed already. How simple was that? And then to finish it off, well, to add the rest of the white blobs because I'm going to bring in some more color, I'm just going to very lightly touch all the way down. Little ones, there's room. Don't worry. If they go off the wing a little bit, that's okay. This part's kind of fun. Cool. If they touch the other white, no big deal. Down. So, got that far. I'm going to come in with just a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow. And that's just the way I was looking at the monarch wing that I had to look at. It had orange and yellow reflecting in it. So I thought, I'll just, just touch some color into that. Now you could stop right here if you want. I'm going to mix these two. And I'm just going to come off a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and that's where I stop. So I've got this wing done, and I'm going to complete the other four, because we have two on the top, two on the bottom, and then once they're done, we'll start assembling. So I have four wings here, and the bottom wings only need the orange and the black. You don't need to do any veining, don't need any dots unless you want to. But those are just to give a little bit of depth to the, to the butterfly. And this is the other side of the mirror side. So right now, it took about half hour each wing, not quite. Um, and once it's dry, I can start adding the dots to this one and then I'll keep going. So here we go, dots. Everybody dry here in both wings. All right, set those aside for just a minute. That's the top set of wings. Now we're going to start assembling. Here's the bottom set. Now you could go crazy and repeat the pattern, but these are strictly for support and add a little bit of depth to the butterfly. So we're gonna attach these wings on some cake board. Now I had these kicking around. They come in packs of three or four and relatively inexpensive, but just cardboard with some shiny on it. So I'm going to attach these guys to the cake board. I'm going to let the cake board be where I put my hanger and also where these wings will sit. So I'm just eyeballing it, lining it up. So not too exacting. I just like to see the space about the same and I'm covering up the edges. So you have just the color coming out here and here. And now I'm going to take my glue gun and attach them straight onto the board. 
Just lay out the glue and lay out the wing. I'll have that one placed. I'll do the same on this side. And put that wing down. Use those edges to guide you. So we have the two base wings down. Like I said, they're only there to add a little more oomph to the hanger and to add some depth to the color. So when you look at it, you will see the color peeking out. Now we add our bigger wings. I don't want them to lay just flat though. So I'm taking a little bit of foam I had kicking around. This actually came out of a package that we had gotten in the mail. Um, I saved stuff, so this foam is going to be good. Line up with the seam and that will just pop the wing up a little bit. I like that. So come on, glue gun. Here we go. A little bit of glue here to hold the foam. You could use cardboard too if you wanted to, but the foam is way more easy to use. I get the depth and I don't have to try to manipulate the cardboard. See? So let's attach that. Lining up with that seam, and then I'm going to press down. Just pushing in on the foam, lining up the wings, make sure they're aligned, which they look good. And then when I pull up, okay, now I'm going to add a little more glue here to hold that down. So right now I'm going for the seam. And the body of the butterfly will also help hold this together. Let it sit for a second since I want it really to, to hold. There we go. You see how it puts a little bit of definition there? So you really don't have to do all the decorating inside. You still get the color that makes the pop. So take another little piece of foam. And do the same thing on this side. Here we go, ready? Okay, see, so just a little bit of pop in the wings. Next comes his body. You know what, I think before I do that, it's easier right now to add the chain. And for that, I'm gonna use my trusty meat thermometer poker. I'm just gonna pull a spot right here near the top and just push through. And the cake board's really, really, <laughs> really accommodating. I'm gonna come back through. Make sure that the hole is nice and clean. One hole. And over here. I have found that some of my hangings, if they hang in real hot sun, the glue does not like that. So I like the chain because it will not melt. Cool. Ready for our chain. And I'm using the little bead chain. The hardest part about using this is getting the little teeny clasp to get on there, but I think that's my fingers malfunctioning, not the chain. So we need one little hook. You can go with a thicker chain if you want. I'm using what I had kicking around. Okay. So I've got the little teeny connector that has to go into the little teeny little ball. It's going to the little teeny connector. And let's see if we can do this without too much. Got it. Oh, how did that happen? All right, so push it through. Drop it through one hole. And there it goes. I'll put the connector on. I think it'll still go through. If not, I'll just pull the other one around. There we go. Good. And I like this because you can adjust the the length of the chain. Okay, now I'm gonna drop this teeny little, teeny little bead into that teeny little. 
connector. Done. So you can either use a long hanger or you can double it up and make it shorter. Yep. Done. Now we can do the body. The body, I just I just cut out a body shape. Does it look like a, a body for a butterfly? Well, it's, it's going to be. It's a little misshapen. I don't care. It's my little guy here. And I put another piece underneath it. I'm going to cut that down a little bit because I want to hook these two together and leave a spot where I can put his antenna. So let me, this one's a little too fat. Let me cut him down. I don't need the tail part. So I'm going to just cut him down a little bit. Think of, I was thinking of a bowling pin when I did this part. It kind of reminds me of one. It's got the same shape. I just want enough to give the body some oomph and to let the antenna have a place to be glued. So, painted black. Here's this little guy in the back. Okay. And I'm going to glue these two together. And I'm going to leave the head free so I can add in the antenna. So one gets painted black, the other is left alone. That's a glue. But I could not find black and I found blue pipe cleaner and I thought that looks lovely. So I'm going to stick with it. A blue pipe cleaner. Any color you want, just fold it in half and we're going to stick it between these two pieces and let it glue. I think there's more support to this piece if I have it sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard rather than to just have it sticking out on its own. Okay. Um, you can bend it however you want. I'm just going for a V shape. And let that really adhere. So our pipe cleaner antenna are now in there. <laughs> so right now, I'm going to attach his body with glue here. Then I'm going to add a little more paint. See, I don't want his tail hanging off. I want his tail to be, or his back end to be, on the gold. If anything is going to be off, it's the antenna off the, uh, the perimeter here. So let's do that. Add a lot of glue right here. He might not adhere, but let's see what we can do. Push down. And then what I'll do is I'll come in under here with some more glue. Excellent. Okay, one more thing to do here before we gloss. And we're going for the blobs again. Take your brush. Get some white paint. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Okay, make it a little more blobby. And on either side of my butterfly's head, he had like a spot like where his eyes would be. Blob. Blob. Simple as that. Two blobs. And then there was like where I would say his shoulders would be. See, I'm not trying to be neat with these blobs because it's really kind of each butterfly is unique. And then it had little dots going down the sides and a little bit of and just a little bit of stuff in the center here. So I just had some fun with some dots. I came down his body. Let's see, I kind of let it fade away. And then come up here. And then I came back in with some more color. Just a little bit of the orange and the yellow. Kind of going through both colors and loading up the brushes. More yellow on one side, more orange on the other. I'll never know when to stop, do I? Okay, well, stop there. So that dries. We're going to gloss. We're ready to hang him. Now I'm only going to gloss the top of the wings and the body. I'm not going to do the cake board or the antenna or any of this extra underneath. Just the top. So gloss. I've got a decoupage gloss here. And I just like to use the lid. Which I probably shouldn't, but I do. I like having this in my hand and close by. Right. Brush, and away we go.
that speeds the process along and let's see what we've got here. Get your little hanger going there, buddy. And we have got our butterfly. <laughs> oh gosh. And there you have it. Some cardboard, some paper, paint, a couple pipe cleaners. And you've got a way to help remind the people around you that when you see a butterfly, we need to do something to help them out because they're beautiful and we'd like to keep them around. So if you like what you've seen here today, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to ring the bell so you know when another episode of Tweaks with Tweak is coming along. Until then, make a butterfly. Bring some awareness to the people that you know. See you again.